Rakers, welcome to your number one rugby podcast. I am none other than the friendly neighborhood referee, Rudy Page. And next to me, my co host, my friend, and my partner, Juan Neil, <laughs> aka JD Chain the House. Come on, Key. Partner, you good, eh? I'm uh, fantastic, my uh, friend. Um, another was keep it changing, keep, uh, keep them guessing. Keep them guessing, keep them uh, changing. And I brought you to my, you know, uh, SAS, um, Stellenbosch Academy of Sport. Um, welcome. Welcome to High Performance. You. Hey. Thank you, boy. It's beautiful this, here. The yes. facilities is fantastic. The people has been welcoming to us, yes, which means yes, I yes. am happy, Ruckus. Yeah, okay. we happy, yeah. Uh, how was the weekend? All good, eh? Partner, mm. um, yeah. No, no, Ruckus, I've got a funny story and I'm going to start this episode like this. <laughs> so, <laughs> Mr. Ref had a brilliant game. I really enjoyed my Your game. Friendly this part. Neighborhood ref. Mm. Your friendly neighborhood ref. Your friendly neighborhood ref was, there was five minutes left into the game, partner. Yep. I stepped into a Oh, and I tried to accelerate Ruckus. Uh, hey, and what happened? Um, I felt my hamstring. Hey, you pulled Amy. I don't think I pulled it. Uh, I think it's a strain. Uh-huh. But the last five minutes, um, I think it was a, a walk more than a, a, a trying to keep up with the game. <laughs> but that was quite a funny moment. Um, that but you got to look after yourself, man. Yeah. Um, Ruckus, uh, he's joking. He was trying to sprint. He thought it was Grand Williams and, and one of the fast boys, the nines these days. Hey, you can't keep up with the nines. Hey? Um, it was such a, uh, it was an eye-opener yep. to, to what I have to do for my conditioning mm. um, to oh, make yeah. sure that my body is, is in tip-top shape for mm. what I'm embarking. So mm. uh, I open it early in my yes, career. Yes, that's why I brought you to the High Performance Center. Yes, yes we've got everything here. we got gyms, physios, and the whole works, yeah? So um, look after yourself. So quite it. funny, when I got mm. home, partner, my wife yeah. asked, what happened? And I was like, um, <laughs> lovey, I, I pulled my hamstring. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but other than that, brilliant mm. weekend, exciting mm. rugby. We're going to yep, get, obviously up, get yeah. stuck into it soon, partner. Um, how was yours? My very chilled, eh? Very relaxed, yeah. Family time, you know, cutie. Quality time with the family, you know. Okay. Like this, yeah. um, Simone, is there any uh, dog box? <laughs> there any dog box? Never, you know I'm a good boy. I've got a seatbelt on it. Okay. Um, Ruckus, um, as before we start our yeah. episode, we just got to do the important stuff and yeah, say thank you to the important. people that makes Behind the Ruck possible. We firstly, Behind the Ruck is always powered by... Kruger International, yeah. Asset and Wealth Management. And then also our exclusive betting partner, Lula Bet, there by Juan Z, is yes. per normal. Thank you for ongoing support. And please go check out their websites and their links at the bottom of this episode. episode yes, 100%. Yeah. Ah, fantastic people in our corner. Hey, man, we yeah. need them in the corner, man. My, pa, huh? my dad told me it's going to be Afrikaans, sorry, Rakkers. Swart suk swart. Yeah, swart suk swart. Goeie mense. Support is baie langer. Thank you guys. All right. <laughs> and yes, Paddy, mm. um, eat me with our yes, lineup. Yes, yes, what can the Ruckers oh, expect oh, in today's oh, episode? Incredible lineup. Hey? Obviously, we got to cover a couple of news. Hey? We need to give flowers. We flowers is a great uh-huh. review. And um, yeah, a couple of changes. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening on uh-huh. news? Um, but yeah, so news. We'll cover the news. And then we've got a friend of the show coming. Hey, he's back. Yes. Yes. Oh. Yeah, we got two friends of the show. It's the Power Ranger. It's hey. more fun time. We got Joe Applin coming in to, to, to cut it deep into the Six Nations. Hey, you know, he's got a lot of experiences to, to, to touch base with him, see if he's, uh, how she's doing, but most of him, most important, see what's happening in the Six Nations because we're an incredible Six Nations. And then, hey, something, we're catching up with someone, huh? Tristan Leitz. Lekker. Mini me in the building. Lekker. Nice, <laughs> nice, we'll nice. we catch up with him a little bit to see how things is, how's the adjustment being from 15s to 7s. Sevens. And um, this way forward and the future um, for him. And uh, yeah, and at the end, we always have our Lula Boy predictions. So. That's an exciting episode, mm, exciting partner. Episode, and, yeah. and, mm. and Ruckus, uh, episodes is, at the moment, they're flying. They're coming they're, on they're, every they're week. Out, Where are we now? Huh? What, what, what number is this? It's how many tomatoes in a, in a 36, 36, how does it say? 36. 36. <laughs> <laughs> episode 36 coming episode 36. in. Exciting times, yeah. So uh, looking forward to this episode. We There's a lot to talk about, you know. Um, obviously, we've got the Cressida coming back, which is the URC. Yes, boy. Two key. weeks of that. Then we bring in the Reigns Rover, which is an investing champions uh, cup. you got yeah. too many cars, but okay. Yeah, and then I don't know. It's probably the Lamborghini when it's a six, uh, when it's <laughs> island coming in. <laughs> it okay. Us, yeah. But mm. partner, obviously, um, my phone has been going off nonstop. Yep. This past weekend, the past week, um, the Rakers probably want to know, yes, what is happening in the world of news? Do you mm. mind saying yeah, let's that? quickly go through the news. Um, obviously, we need to give flowers and credit where credit is due. So, we had a lot of, um, SA Rugby Awards was on ah. show, yes. I know it's a team sport, but at the end of the day, individual artwork must be rewarded. Yes, it's always uh, nice. Just quickly going through it. Obviously, the Springboks is team of the year. We've got the Jack Ninabur, coach of the year. The Sevens player of the year, Tricky Ricky, Ricardo hey. Duatri. Yeah, well done. <laughs> um, uh, junior player, Kone Bietz. And then the two Karika players. The first division is obviously uh, Cameron Hawk. 
Hufki, 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 Hufki. Hufki, it is, yeah. Yes. Kemi Hufki. And then uh, Karika Premiership is obviously Rowan Pina, the old man. He's still a bit of a guy. And this is oh. Women's oh. Player of the Year, oh. Libby Janssen van Rensburg. Young Player of the Year, back to back. Kainan Moody. Peppies. Kainan Moody. Peppies. Kainan Moody. <laughs> so congratulations to him. And then obviously, hey, you've been at a bit. Is a rugby player of the year. Well Consistent. done. Consistent. Also back to back. Hey. Yeah. Back, back to back. back. Hey. Congrats, so congrats, congrats, guys. Say. And then, oh, as, as, uh, the big one, actually. Sia Kulisi, glorious comeback of the year. That's an incredible one, eh? Yeah. Um, fantastic reward for fantastic rugby players. Yeah. Um, everyone that was at the function, yeah. congratulations. Um, I know you guys are proud of your awards. It's actually like come to see me to vote reward for the other week. Other week, yeah. And especially at comebacks, you know, that was... Yeah, well, what we a, obviously discussed it I, in the episode I, when he was with us. Um, it's probably an achievement, eh? It's a massive achievement. And it's we, ground we know, breaking we, partner. We know you got a little niggle now uh, with, his, uh. with his wrist, but we, maybe they say six weeks is two weeks, eh? Uh, it's next week, Tara. <laughs> yes. So, um, yeah, that's that's from the awards, you know, giving flowers, giving credit where it's due. And then obviously there's uh, also a um, couple of changes within the seven squad. Uh, Philip Sneeman taking over. So all the best to the sevens boys. Um, obviously, we're going to speak to Tristan later to see how it goes because... Madrid is very important. Yeah. Um, that's going to be crucial and then also qualifying for the, for the Olympics. Olympics. Yeah. And a couple of other changes we know. Rassi's also announced his whole management squad, but there's a, another change. Dave Vessels moved to general uh, manager of the High Performance Center. Yes. So yeah, that's good to see. Uh, the structures needs to be in place and the needs in the future and the planning of obviously the women's, uh, the sevens and the juniors They're needs no to use. be in place. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We need the, someone to... The next to generation, Springboks, the next generation, Juan de Jong and the yeah. pages. Experience guys just to make sure that everything is aligned yes um, yeah and then um, the new signings a lot of new signings Shark is a visa. Pen and um, papier is, is, but uh? I think I might have to become a shark supporter hey, now. Hey, hey, um, hey, 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 yeah. um, obviously, one of my best friends, Mr. Nyankane, hey, yes. has decided to join the sharks. So, so we're going to see that. that, that uh, hey. Uh, so, uh, Trevi, congratulations. Um, so, obviously, happy that he's back in South Africa. Yeah. Trevi is, is going there as well. Andre Andre is, is, going is going back to the well. sharks. So a lot of changes. We got um, Kuba's visa that's moving up sales sharks, obviously, to. Uh, <laughs> hey, bala, 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 bala. And, and it's, it's, uh, I'm always a big fan mm. um, of South African guys returning to returning yes. home. So I've got no issues with that. I'm extremely happy that we keep that IQ and, mm. and IP within our country. Yep. So that is excellent signings for the country. For the country and yeah. hopefully for the Sharks next year, they will be able to start better. Yeah. And have a better season. Better season, yeah. But great signing, Sharks. Yeah. Well done. But it's not too late as well. They, they can still it's go back. It's never too late to apologize. To apologize. <laughs> so that's the news. A lot of things to cover. Obviously, Super Rugby is up and running. Uh, oh, Crusaders, come on. <laughs> and Vasti Cup as well. So, um, yeah, a lot of rugby. It's falling out of the air. Yes, but partner, it's exciting, I, I know at the time times. we complained. Um, yes, it's boring. It's still not big rugby. It's still not big. But I, I like that 9.30, uh, waking up coffee key in the Super oh, Rugby. Oh, favorite. And, yes, 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 favorite. yes. My new favorite team in Super Rugby is the Fiji Drua. Ah, hey. Mana is on fire. They're they on fire. Oh, huh? I like the way they play. It's the got the sense boys. of freedom. Yes. So they're definitely my new the favorite team. In the boys, the yeah. talk was <laughs> on fire there. <laughs> yeah, so that's exciting. Let's get to Joe Applin. I want to know what's happening. I can't wait. I see him on full. I will give you chit chit chat. He's huh? must us. Yeah? Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> up next, Joe Applin. Joe Applin. Hey, partner, hey. <laughs> it's not the guest of the show. Oh, it's but a friend of the okay. show. Wait, you have plon. Hey, <laughs> must I say uh, welcome to Behind the Rock or must I say, uh, and uh, good to see you? I say welcome back. Welcome okay, back. Welcome, welcome back. back. <laughs> welcome back. <laughs> welcome back. <laughs> Justin, sir, you good? No, I've been applying for this position for a while now. Uh, is it okay? Thank you for having me back. Uh, <laughs> this is the first round of interviews. <laughs> huh? first, first round of interviews. Yes, job. yes, he's getting caps now, eh? Huh? But it's <laughs> excited to have you back, eh? Like, uh, Gio, so obviously, uh, um, we actually came to you, uh, you also around here. It's beautiful, yes, This yeah. time, uh, we, we had him on Zoom, uh -huh. okay? Then he was in the studio, okay? Now we come to him, uh -huh. okay? Yeah, yeah. So, so now my rock is here. I'm a creep. It's cool because it's behind the work, behind the studio, behind the rock. It's, it's everything. Yeah. Yes. But just for our rockers as well, I'm excited to have you on the show. Um, obviously, we're going to cut deep into the this past weekend. Right? Chaotic. Yo, chaotic Six Nations. Incredible, incredible couple of games that it um, was actually looking at that first game. Let's go through the games quickly. And um, the results from, from the first game, it was Wales against Italy. 21-24, uh -huh. quarter past four. Gents, what a game that was. Eh? Talking about, especially, let's, let's start with Italy. Let's get credit where credit is due. 
Hey? I actually want to start with mm. obviously. I think the the, the scoreline is is, is 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 way closer than the, what yeah, the game yeah. was, boys. Mm. Um, the Italians were outstanding. The first half, they obviously kept the ball really well. The the way they used the blindside wingers mm. to create space in that 15 meters on the far side was something I really liked. I don't know what you guys saw in the game. No, totally agree with you. Uh, I must say they started very well. Um, and and we look at Island, uh, Italy's attack. It's it's pretty much close to Ireland. It's uh, like we spoke about their triangles and stuff like that. The way they scored their first try as well with um, um, the Lorenzo uh, Pani. He steps in. Obviously for Capuccio, that didn't that wasn't available and a massive massive impact. But I mean I must say this this Panini. talent Panini Panini Panini. Okay. <laughs> 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 so, so, Gio, looking at that the game, especially Italy, there's talent all over the show. I think Italy is, is doing it an incredibly well. Obviously, you want to give credit to Gonzalez Gonzalez or, or Gonz, as, yes. as, as we call him. But I think mm. if you go a little bit back, you have to give credit to Kieran Crowley also, who, who laid the foundation. If you, if you look at their squad now, a lot of those guys played in the World Cup and he's just transitioning over. But then taking into account with, with, with Gonz, he was... He, he, he coached a long time at um, Stade Francais. Mm. I think say. where he kind of got the feel a lot with Sergio Parise. Parise. He, he spent a lot of time with him, yeah. um, coaching him there. And I think the Spanish, if you look at the Argentinians and the, the Italy guys, they have the same kind of demeanor in terms of, I won't say hot-blooded, but they like to play on their emotions. Passionate. And mm. I think he understands yeah. that. And you can now see with Italy, they, they, they're still passionate, but they're playing to a certain direction, if I can call it that. They, mm. They're more effective. Where back in the day, they were emotional and then they were maybe physical, but now they're mixing the two. And I yeah. think that's 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 what Gons got right in the last couple of weeks. That's why he got that. And they're a very emotional <laughs> team, especially when it comes to the national anthem and, and you know, they're passionate about mm. the squad and you can see it by the way they're playing as well. You know, the extra yards they do when there's a line break, the way they're chasing back and stuff like that makes a massive difference. No, and, and I think they should have probably won that first game as well, do you, mm. against England. Yeah, um, they, they came mm, up close. Mm. Um, they won the, France, the penalty yeah. kick against France that, mm. that hit the pole. Debatable, yeah. So I think... Um, they could have had probably their best season so far in the Six Nations if it wasn't for those two results. Mm -hmm. But the thing that stood out for me is actually the way they kicked as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They kicked a lot of nine. Yep. Um, they kicked contestable. Yeah. They didn't overplay in their own half. Yeah. So that was actually something, especially in that first half, first 15 minutes, they stood out to me the way they kicked. Mm -hmm. So I think that they're finding the balance with him. So if you, if, <clears throat> if you look back at them or back a couple of years, they either played too boring rugby or mm. they were too emotional. And I think with him, yeah. and obviously probably credit to Franco Smith that was there, and then Kieran Crowley that was there before before Gons. But I think they find the balance now, and they really played some effective rugby. You can see they they physical, they are passionate, but they also um, what is the word now? They also um, they play to a point where they um, strong, yeah. They they strong. They, mm. they use their strong points, and then obviously they are effective. Mm. Like they're chasing and you're like it's chasing back, they're contesting. It's good to watch. Like. Yeah, all around team. Yeah, especially we're speaking about the attack now and the kicking game as well. But I'm I'm actually very, very surprised in the defense as well. The defense is looking good. They've obviously got Marius who was in there, old the Bulls player. Hey. That's that um, hey. played. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So so he's actually leaving um, them as well. But the defense is good. They don't have a, a rust defense like England and South Africa. They've got this line speed, but it's a connected line speed. And that puts a lot of pressure onto, especially like Wales, you know, France as well. They couldn't get going. And, and Ireland, they, they had a little of a hiccup, but um, the Ireland's attack is obviously on, on a different level. But they're effective now with, with all the departments. Yeah, I think Marius, he's been there for a while. He's, he's seen different coaches. He understands those players. He's been at the World Cup. He's been there before. So I think sometimes you just meet, need to add some, some little bit of mix. And I think mm. Gons is that little bit of mix where he brings that that balance. And then Marius, and, and, and then players start believing in, yeah, in yeah. the coaches and, and stuff. And I think that's probably... The defense is, is, is a couple of years in the making. It's, it mm. took them a while, but I'm glad they are here now. It's, it, it was really good to watch the Six Nations. Yeah. Yeah, incredible, yeah. And, 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 and uh, the Wales Pucky. Hmm? What, what is happening with, with Uncle Gatlin? Uh, I don't know. Uncle Gatlin is going to do the same rock as his Uncle a, Eddie. A massive, a massive transition, I must say. And uh, it's not good for Wales rugby. Um, you know, it's the first time in 21 years that they're getting the wooden spoon. And the wooden spoon is not something you actually want. But uh, I must say, they, they don't get... The, the, the guys that left, they're not filling that gaps, you know, especially Dan Bigger, that's a way. Um, they tried now Sam Castello and also Leon Lloyd um, that's playing for Scarlets, but they're not, 
uh, connecting. But before we get to the way they play Gio mm. and, and, and and partner, um, don't you think it's it's maybe too early for for those guys to to to? Uh, I I remember when Victor and Morne and those guys left the Bulls, yeah. and we had to step in. It takes a while to fill that gaps mm. and the void that those experienced players left. I mean, bigger played for how many years? In that same role, yeah. the same with Ellen Wayne Jones, mm. the same with Ben's George North. Mm. So there's a big void, and I think we, uh, that's my opinion. I think we might um, really have unrealistic expectations of those guys stepping in immediately yeah. and turning around the boat. But again, I looked at their teams, and, and again, if you look at the Welsh side, again, 15, 16 guys, guys of those guys played in the World Cup. So that's a bit worrying. The other thing I saw on Saturday was identity. It seems like they're in between a lot of young players who wants to play and a lot of older, not older players, but players that that still knows that Wales are, are competitive when they play a certain way. Yeah. Kick, chase, be, be physical, suffocate. So I'm not sure they they understand, a lot of them or, or the whole team understands the identity where they want to go. I don't know if that's is still yeah. the, the message Gats is giving and, tell, and telling them, listen, we're going to play like the old Welsh guys used to play or we're going to play the new way. And it's the same when Wayne Pivik um, um, came there. Also changing in, uh, like changing in personnel, changing mm. identity, and they struggled. Mm. So I don't know if Wales are just a team that's going to play like they used to play and that's how they should play, or if they can actually move to the other side where they're more free and fluently and attacking. I'm not sure, but Saturday you could see even a silly thing when the guy kicks the ball that there's no communi communication oh. between the 10 and the 15. Yeah. It's yeah. silly things, and, and it looks like yeah. just like, are we? Connected? Looks like an identity crisis. Yeah. That they're in. Luckily, it's the first year after the World Cup, so you still they're still building a team. But hopefully, that happens sooner than later. You guys think it's it's the drama of the field as well? Because um, looking at why would the guy like Louis um, Rizamet go overseas and play NFL? Um, you know, you got George North that's actually called it a day now as well. Um, Lee Alfpenny that played Super Rugby now at the moment. So, uh, what do you guys think on what the future looks like for them, especially? Because um, there's a lot of new youngsters and you, you, when you build a squad, especially we know in the South African with the Springboks, you need that senior and junior mix. And that's that's the only way the juniors can grow. So um, in terms of plan now forward, lo uh, moving into the 2027 World Cup. I'm not sure if, if you look at the Welsh regions, they're also struggling with money and everything. Yeah. So if you look at a, like a guy like Louis Rees Zamet, he's going to the NFL. The, the other thing is, could he actually stay in 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 Welsh rugby? I'm not sure financially if it's if it's viable. Secondly, are they still allowed to pick someone outside of of, of Wales for is Cats going to bring that rule back that you have to play in in in, in, in Wales? Promises. So I'm not sure if it's if it's if, if a guy can actually still play in Wales with all that drama that's going on, or if it's easier for him to move overseas and see maybe two years in. From two years out of the World Cup and see maybe come back and see what yeah. if I can make Do you guys it. think it's it's just best for them to to start all over? Rebuild from scratch or, or do we still have hold on to a little bit of that all the players to to guide? What is the best way for gets? For, for me, the, the best way is always to grow with senior players. Mm -hmm. You need a couple of senior players, even if it's 50% of senior players. But to start fresh, that takes uh, years. Um, if, if there's senior players around almost like one or two years and then, then they build experience and it's easier to, to build forward. But yeah, you can't build scratch in terms of especially your key players, your nines, your tens. A tens is important, especially with Dan Vigor, leaving that massive hole. It's going to be a big, big um, hole that um, they, they're digging themselves into, especially moving on to the 2027 Rugby World Cup. But what's the identity going to be? So, so, so they first need to decide on that. Yeah. Are we going to be a team like Ireland or I don't know how England wants to play now, but or like Scotland, are we mm. going to throw the ball around or are we going to yeah. go back to suffocate and strangle? Once they know that, they, they can they can decide, listen, either the new generation is going to take us into that or we still need those old guys. Looking at, this, at the Six Nations, they're trying to attack, they're trying to play like England play and Ireland play, but they, they, they get pretty good line breaks, but once they get into the 22, it's like silly mistakes. It's like knock-ons here, it's side entries here, it's neck roll there. And those type of things make a, you know, it's a, it's actually a cancer and a, and a killer, especially when it comes to those. Jason, said no, like it's a trifle. No, 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 come on. <laughs> That's what Jason said, trifle. I can hear him, he said like it's a trifle, okay? <laughs> Since it obviously the main important game. So, so we build it up, you know, with that first game. Now into our second game. Our second game was Ireland versus Scotland. So mm -hmm. Ireland 17, Scotland 13. Oh, what a crack of a what game. What did we think? Huh? <laughs> Must we give credit where it's it, due? It, it, I, uh, for, for me, I mean, I'm, I might be wrong. This is my own opinion. It just looked like Man City played against another team. Because Ireland had the ball. Yes, they made silly mistakes. They were attacking. And yes, 
It's the same with Man City, if you, if you think of soccer. Like, they're attacking teams, and then teams get a, like, a counter-attack, and then they score a try. And that's what Scotland was actually doing. Yes, they had some phases where they went wide and they got the ball, but it, I never felt that Ireland Scotland's was going to win. Yeah, going to win. Even okay. at the end. Because Ireland, yes, Ireland made some silly mistakes, not holding onto the ball in the 22 or whatever, but I think Ireland, at the moment, and the number two team in the world, just to make sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Number two team in the world. But they just looked like they're attacking. First half, they were attacking. Same one, then back. And then second half, they would take the ball all the way to the 15. And, and you could just see, like, they were running um, Scotland off their feet. Right, yeah. Because the thing is, Paige backed them in the Rugby World Cup. He's 80 boy kid, too, right? Scotland. Yeah, Scotland. Yeah, I guess, yeah. I guess I and, and, and then I backed them in the Six Nations, thinking uh, that Ireland, this game, would have been, like, no. an aside. But to say, no, they, they just can't, they don't have that cutting, that, that cutthroat, yeah. um, I don't mentality. Yeah. They, yeah. they play Turning attractive like rugby, this. they get you excited, but they just never deliver. They yeah, never, yeah. They, when it, and we said last weekend that they take off, but then they go in that cruise control. And I mean, when you play guy, teams like, you know, number uh, two uh, country in the world, yeah, nice, nice boy you gotta be, you gotta be <laughs> nice on song, boy-key. you gotta be on form, you, you need to make sure that once you, Five points up, you gotta go to seven, you gotta go to 15, you gotta go to 22. So, um, so yeah, so very disappointing from- but, but do we think from a Scotland point of view, right? When, when the box play, we can bring on the bomb squad. It's mm. the same with the All Blacks. When they when something is not um, going as planned, they've yeah. got a bench that they can bring on, that can make an impact, that can make a difference. Sometimes I feel like if Finn and the starters are not getting it right, they don't. They, they, they got nothing mm. else, Gio. No, for sure. And I, I think also like, the difficulty with attacking rugby is you need to be cutthroat and you need to take opportunities. Defensive rugby is easier. Like the Springboks are playing, you can suffocate and strangle teams and you can get an opportunity here. But if you play like Ireland, you need to get points when you're in the 22. You need to score points. You need to keep the pressure on. And with Scotland, I, I honestly just feel they don't have the quality and depth, like you said now, yeah. that can actually go to that next step. And I think that's where they, they fall a bit short. So they can stay into games. They can start well. They get back. But... It's one or two. Duan van der Merwe is good and Carlsen mm. does something, but there's not a collective that keeps on putting the pressure on you yeah. and on you. And then there's a bit of physicality here. So I just think... Hmm? Just out, just out, just out. Yeah, out, yeah, so a little bit in between, yeah. So Paolo with a filter on it. Exactly. Clip on the straw with my bewegging. Exactly. Yeah. Speaking about the South Africans in the Scotland team, mm. they actually, they had a good season, especially Duan van der Merwe, oh. Carlsen. If Just one question for the two of you. So when you talk about the South Africans, do they stand a chance when it comes to the Springboks, you know, having Carl mm. stay in there, having Duan van der Merwe there, VPNL, Schumann, and even a, a guy like you, Jones, mm. uh, is there any one of the five of them that can step into our squad? Um, in if my I go first, no. <laughs> I, 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 I think Duan is playing brilliant rugby. He's obviously yeah. um, one of the world-class wingers, but will I drop him for Cheslin or for Kirtley? That, yeah. That's unfortunately a no yeah, partner. Note, so. Yeah. Um, but they is, he is on fire. He is definitely the star player next to Finn Russell in that Scotland mm. team. But the boys we've got there, the Power Rangers, I'm on a solid. Uh, yeah, the solid. And yeah. drop me in front of okay. <laughs> And the thing is also like, we, we are accepting Cheslin and Kirtley now because of the way the high standard they have. But that standard came because of Makazul on Pimpi. Yeah. He set the yeah. bar there. He set the, yeah. And the only, the only reason why they're playing is they, at that stage, they were better than me. But he set the, the, the bar. And would you really swap but all, all due respect, Duan van der Merwe or Kyle Stein for Makazola and Pimpi mm. to get to Cheslin, I don't think so. And what about the props as well? If you, guys like Skuman and the uh, now not standing a chance against Katsi and Franz van <laughs> And you, Jones, because he, he, he had a good game and, and you, Jones, stepping out of that 13 jumper, he's, he's, he he's scored 17 tries for Scotland. So when it comes to mm. attack, he's, he's on song. Will he, is he some, someone I, that knocks on the door for I mean, I actually want to turn that question around and ask you as you the, yes. the 13. You played with him. Um, played with him. Oh my gosh. To, to be fair, between the five of them, I, I would say you, Jones, got the best shot in, in terms of when it comes to the Springbok squad. Okay. Um, yeah, so just because of his attacking ability, you know, scoring that crucial um, tries and a crack of a... a a six, six nations, nations and even for the past couple of years for Scotland, you know, scoring 17 tries for Scotland is not something that just comes by luck. It's 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 hard work, it's agility. Mm-hmm. We've played with him a couple of years here as well. He's grown as as, as well because defense was also like his his negative side when it comes to his game, but he's, he's, I must say his defense has picked up as well. So if there's someone that's knock, knocking on the door, it's it's probably um probably um, you Jones, yeah, but between the five of them, yeah. I would disagree a little bit because mm. for me, and, if you want to play for, for Rasi Rasmus or want to play for him. I always tell these the young boys, yeah. your your clips without the ball 
should be more than your clips with the ball. Yeah, so if yeah, you really yeah. want to play for the Springboks, we see Cheslin and we see Kurt, I always use them as an example. Now, now and then you, saw, you see the try, but all the time you see the contest, all the time you see the chasing back, mm. the, the spot tackle. So if, if that is the bulk of your highlights, then you will play for yeah. the Springboks. Does you, Jones, for me personally, fall into that category? Yeah, it's all about the unseen work, especially for the Springboks. And it, that's a very good point because um, that's what the, the Springbok base themselves in. It's about involvement. It's not all, all about the ball. It's about how many involvements, how effective can you be within 80 minutes because the involvements get you a good game anyway, mm -hmm. gets mm -hmm. the team forward, gets you get in good positions. Yeah, and then <laughs> moving on to that team is the number one, the number two, number two team in the Island. world. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So uh, let's get stuck with them because we're obviously facing them in a couple of months, you know, 6th of July when it comes to Loftus. Uh, I, I actually want to start, partner. Obviously, mm. you know, I had my, had my I wasn't convinced, you mm. in the beginning of, of Crowley. Mm -hmm. um, I thought um, Johnny Sexton is going to leave a massive hole to be filled. Um, and Crowley is, I'm going to be, I'm going to eat the humble pie. Mm. He has surprised me. I, I, I think the fact that the ability that Johnny didn't have that he has, mm. He can take it to the line. He can be sure. a threat. He's mm. just not a link in between. He's a bit more physical. Yeah, he's got so, the bicep culture. Uh, mm. He's definitely surprised me. And mm. I think um, he's a definite threat. And, and sure. Ireland is lucky actually to have someone mm. filter in so quickly. So quickly, yeah. Uh, and, and, and it's almost like they didn't. They don't miss Johnny in a way because he's, he's, he's same, same, but different. He's, he's strong on defense, he's strong on attack. He gives them that shape we talk about, that uh, we call it the, the triangle shape. Yep. Um, they're very effective. So it doesn't look like the forwards yep. is missing anything, sure. uh, especially from nine and playing off 10. And I think with, with Jack Crowley, he brings something different. I think the only thing I believe that's still lacking is the authority and maybe the, we spoke about it, the, I won't say the discipline, the, it's exactly the discipline yeah. uh, uh, that, that Johnny Sexton had. Like the authority he had when he walked around, I mean, almost 100, more than 100 <laughs> yeah. chest. So maybe he lacks that. But I mean, otherwise, and maybe he tries a bit more stuff um, off the top, top, top of his head. Mm. But I think overall, I mean, playing wise, organizing is, is, is really good. He stepped in like we never expected. But I think maybe that's the one, if I'm critical, the one yes. or two things is missing. But I mean, it's not. It's not evident in the game now. Mm. And and that those qualities that you obviously mentioned now, do you think you will get that through no, playing sure. in that position no, sure. game after game? No, for sure. And, and, and hopefully Ross Byrne, uh, who's, the, who's the guy from Leicester, will push him a bit and, and, mm. and between the two of them. And, and, and I mean, playing next to Bandi Aki. And yeah. Ringer and that's in, so, yeah. Oh, that's, and then inside of you, Jameson Gibson Park. Oh, I mean, yeah. I watched him a couple of years back and I'm sorry to say this. I am like, so this kid is struggling. I, I mean, mm. a couple of years back, but now he's, he's been unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. He outplayed Conor Murray, who's been over yeah. the Irish scrum off after Peter Stringer and, and those guys. But he is he, he's running that whole He's show. incredible, yeah. He's incredible. And, and I mean, it must be easy for, for Crowley having him sure. in, in front of him and, and, and oh. the Whitbeaks. Whitbeaks. <laughs> <The laughs> BPC Summit. <laughs> <laughs> having him in the back of him. But I mean, especially like looking at our nines as well, he can play mm. scrum off as well. Mm -hmm. He can fold into that mm -hmm. spot. He's a senior player play, uh, play as well. Um, looking at the whole squad now, forwards and backs, it's not like there's any weakness, is it? No, obviously there's a reason they're number two. The same with the mm. box, there's a reason the box is number one in the world. So I think that that's what's going to make later in the year in July so intriguing mm. when the two teams clash in South Africa. But they... Standing, obviously, they had a, a difficult loss in the World Cup against yeah. the All Blacks. Um, and I think that one game didn't make them a bad, a bad team, obviously. Mm. They've just continued from last year on. Um, so a really good team. Yeah. But they're coming to South Africa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a stuff but in Africa. With altitude? Met. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Jack actually, Jack actually got that thing and he put it up there. Like, yeah. He actually put it up there and said, altitude matters. Like, and and we, went to, we went to Emirates <laughs> Airline Park the week after. Uh -huh. So you guys, I think it's 1,500 yes. meters. And they put it up there. <laughs> <laughs> they want to let you know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and Joe, talking about the set piece as well. Okay, mm. the technical detail when it comes to the forward pack. I mean, the lineouts, uh, the scrums, it's incredible of, of Ireland. Um, if you look at this past weekend's game, those forwards, they, they put uh, Scotland onto skates. Uh, uh, Skuman had a, a tough day to office. Their, their lineouts was functioning as well. Um, set piece wise, uh, is, is, are, are, they, are they solid? 
I think there's still opportunity for, for the Springboks at set piece. I mean, our scrum is, is, is incredible. I mean, there's no scrum in the world that can even last with the bomb squad or the starting. So I think there's a little bit of weakness. If you look at Porter, a lot of people say sometimes yeah. illegal. You could see Saturday was a little bit struggling. He was struggling and there was another guy that came on. I'm not with the dreads. I'm well, not sure what his name. He also wasn't, wasn't yeah, up, up there. Mm. So I think they, they can mix it with the lineouts. They're quite smart there in playing the back in a vacuum and playing wide. But I think the scrum is the one the one area where, where the Springboks can attack them. Yeah, yeah, they were very strong. Yeah, and those two props, they, they look like biker boys. Yeah. Tattoos on the legs and, and don't corner judge. rolls. Okay. Don't judge them. <laughs> Please, champion, my father, <laughs> don't judge them. Usually the backs, you'll see corner rolls and tattoos, but these props are coming in. Oh, As a new days. generation, <laughs> Wiki. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so looking, uh, if you look at like Loftus, Farrisfeld on the 2nd of July, um, what what aspects should we look at Island? Um, is it the set piece? Is it the backs? Is it because um, if you look at the penalties when it, when it, when it's time for penalties in front, like 10, 15 meters out, mm. they go for a quick tap. They, they want to score some tries. They they're not there for for three points, six point, nine mm. points, and that's usually when when we we want to get scoreboard pressure. Yeah, it's obvious. I actually like the mindset. Mm. I, I I do like the. I know back in the days when we used to play the Crusaders, it was a, a simple thing. If you have to score more tries than them yes, to beat go. them, mm. so I don't know if that's the the the, the Irish mindset. Mm -hmm. um, but I do like it, to be totally honest with you. Yeah. It brings a bit of entertainment into the yeah. game. Um, it puts the defensive side under massive pressure. Exactly. I think if you're standing under mm. the poles knowing three points is an easy release. Mm. We, we, all mm. three of us play mm. the game. You're like, okay, they're going for poles. Three points is not so bad. But if the team comes you five meters from the try exactly. line, you're immediately under the pump. And that's almost like a monster lens, the thing, because they play the same way, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Yes, and, and obviously if you kick for the corner, there's obviously your forwards need to defend. It's tiring. It's seven points. You give you a bit of a break. If you take the three points, which obviously is test, test meets rugby, you go back and you have to exit again. And sometimes you don't know how that exit might be. The only thing I think at Loftus or in South Africa, when the Irish come here is goal kicking. I don't think they have a renowned goal kicker. Jack mm. Crowley isn't that solid, yes, from the yeah. size, but, but long. And then I, for me, personally, I think the best the Irish can get, and like I it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah back <laughs> yourself, back yourself. <laughs> it's one all. So if, if the Irish win the first test, Really, you see the Springboks lose the second yeah. test because the way they analyze, they, they go find it. Oh, yeah. and like mm. if you look, the British and Irish lines, whenever the Springboks loses the first test, they don't they don't lose the second one. But they also showed if they win the first one, they can lose the second mm. one. So that's the that's the only thing I can see for Ireland unless they come and they blitz the Springboks awesome. off and there's no experience or whatever yeah. or whatever that might be. But it's going to be a close contest, mm. and um, I think the best for Ireland is going to be one. I'm one excited all. for this. I'm too. excited, but yeah? we've had enough of Ireland now, yeah. partner, man. Yeah. Huh? Do you want to go to Francis? Francis, mm? I want to talk French about fries. the boxman here. Yeah, <laughs> talk the box as well, because obviously we're playing them at Loftus first field yes. and it's uh, in, in uh, Durban as well. But the week before, we're playing Wales first, guys. Okay. Don't forget, we're playing Wales right. at the uh, Qatar Airways Cup at Twickenham. Okay. Uh, uh, what is the what should the approach be? Should we send a B team over to Twickenham, or should we get firing straight away into that game Twickenham and then be battle hardened, like you say? For, I, for I'm gonna go here yeah, and say Rashi is gonna do exactly the same that he did in 2018 when he took over from Coach Alistair, mm -hmm. where the box played in Washington against mm -hmm. Wales mm -hmm. and he kept his starting lineup mm -hmm. in Pretoria yeah. at altitude. They prepped and he, I don't want to name it, but he sent a, a B team over mm -hmm. to Wales and I can see a similar thing happening. Yeah. Sent guys that's, that's on the fringes to go mm -hmm. play Wales at Twickenham and he'll keep his best side to prepare at altitude mm -hmm. for that first Irish test. Yeah, I think that's a smart move. I'm, I'm not too sure because I, I think it's the same as the British and Irish lines. I think real, you, you could hear in the press conference other day he really wants to beat Ireland. So maybe he uses that well, Wales game for as a prep because yeah. if you think uh, what's it now um, jet lag or what there's no jet That's lag you, you just fly back mm. so I think he's gonna use that as a prep I, I don't think show show too much but then oh he might just rest him but I think he really wants to beat Ireland yeah. and he wants to go 2-0 I, I can yeah, promise you that so I think yeah. he's, he probably might use that Wales test as a prep um, rather than giving the other guys a chance. Yeah, I would also say that. I will say mm. that we will go there with 70, 80 yes, percent, having a strong starting. team and giving one or two guys opportunities mm. that's played well in the in, in the URC um, going forward. But yeah, um, day prepping alignment camp is it? They busy with alignment camps. And I actually want to touch. I want to actually. I have to ask you this question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you <laughs> opportunities now. <laughs> <laughs> Gio, um, obviously, Springbok rugby has been 
known or renowned for kick suffocate yep. defensive mm-hmm. um, yeah. strangleholds on team. Mm-hmm. Tony Brown is mm-hmm. the total opposite of all those above that I just mentioned. Do you think there will be a change in the way that we play with him? Or what are you expecting with Tony stepping into the Springbok mix? <laughs> I think it's just another weapon. Russ is putting in, a, he knows obviously, I don't know if, oh, I won't say, how long France, I won't say he's still going to play, but the, the, the physicality, how long is that going to last? Because we're going to lose a couple of players going into the World Cup. He knows Ireland is on the up. He knows Scott Robinson is preparing something there. He mm. knows Joe Smith is preparing something in, in, in Ireland, uh, in, in Australia. So he also knows that the game is evolving and it's moving on. We will probably never go away from being physical, um, contesting, but he also wants to add another dynamic to the spring box because yeah. he's got money now. He can play with money. He can always use poly. Not they always use poly showed yeah. Yeah. what he's, he's worth. It. But he always got poly and he can, and he can use money now and he can look for a similar kind of thing. And Tony Brown is quite good in exploiting um, um, defenses with his attacking yeah. mindset and ability. So he wants to free up those backs so that the Springboks can play both ways. And that's, you must give credit to Rasi in terms of that. He, he, he's really evolving the Springboks. The personnel or the coaching staff he went to go pick, it's, in my personal opinion, maybe there's some of those guys in South Africa that can actually coach. Yeah. Um, one Super Rugby, uh, you are seeing, yeah, good coaches, played, yeah. mm. played in the final. So I can feel for those coaches and there's probably other coaches here that feels they can get an opportunity. So I'm not too sure, but obviously if he wants the best and that is his plan, we need to back him. Yes. Um, I'm going forward. Yeah, and are you all for uh, international coaches coming in? Obviously, you've worked with um, Tony Brown in 2008 when he was here at the Stormers. You know, we've got a lot of foreign coaches coming in. Are you all for it? The South Africa learning because all the other countries are, 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 are stepping it up. Ireland is stepping it up. All of a sudden, Italy is stepping it up. Um, uh, is, is the good thing for us? It would be wrong for me to, 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 to answer that definitely in terms mm. of, I have never had a chat with Russ in terms of what he's thinking. But I would think a guy like, Elad Walters was here, mm. the SNC, then Andy came. I, I would surely think a South African must take over now after two campaigns, Andy is still there. I would think a Muzandile stick will be promoted to an assistant coach yeah. or whatever. I would think that, but I don't know what Russ is thinking and where he wants to take those guys in terms of, I think, Norman Laker. Mm. Yeah, some good URC, I mean, yeah. he won a URC, he came, he, they were runners up. So I would think he's the closest... I always say closest thing to Jacques in terms of mm. defensive yeah. you know, defensive yeah. coaching. So I think he, I, I thought he would have got a go or call, but then he went with Jennifer, Jerry Flannery. Flannery. I'm not sure what his thinking is, mm. but if you're from a South African perspective, you will surely think if you if you want to play for the Springboks, you play well in, this, in the URC and you get promoted. Then you, yeah, yeah. Now you coach well in the, in the URC on your local competition, but you don't get promoted. But again, Rasi probably knows what he wants to do, where he wants to take the team. He probably has got everything he wants <clears throat> now going into the World Cup. So I, I would, I won't say pressure on him, but I think if a coach gets everything, I think if, anything short of winning the next World Cup would, would probably be a failure. Yeah. If, like, yeah, if yeah, I can call it that. Yeah, Not to put pressure, pressure on, yeah. on the, on the yeah. Yeah, most in, in any way, too, yeah. but mm. I mean, they got everything, everything they wanted. If you look at that, three analysts, three what, three mm. coaches, 10 coaches. So you would expect there's everything they need. And you, you I won't say you would want the results, but if the, Winning the World Cup is the goal. You'll probably get measured by that because mm-hmm. you've got everything. Yeah. Yo, and that is like rugby off the field. But on the field as well, the players, uh, there's obviously a lot of injuries, especially the boys from Japan. Mm-hmm. You had Faf and Jesse and Kwaha especially mm-hmm. that, that's injured. Sia. Um, Sia as the well. So thumb. looking at the alignment camp, the guys, uh, you know, at, at, that, are you happy with the alignment camp? Guys that's played fantastic in the URC that maybe missed an opportunity over there and... Are we going to filter? Are we going to replace guys like uh, Kwaha Smith when it comes to that 7-1? Because we want to be physical. We want to have 6-2. 6-2. Six two. Six two. Oh, it's those because type of things. 6-2. Yeah. <laughs> so, so in terms of our, our, our squat and depth and injuries, um, are, are we looking good to taking on the number two team? No, I think for sure. It, it depends on how the split box wants to play. We always have the 6-2 split. We can go 5-3. 7-1 was obviously just two. There was a, there was a, there was a specific reason why we went 7 Seven one in the World Cup and in the World Cup final, because if you look at the at the All Blacks, the six two gives you that that opportunity, or gives you that advantage when you bring on that that forward. They 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 lack a back. The the the, the All Blacks went with five three, but what they actually do, they bring on Sam Whitelock and they move Scott better to six, and that's where they keep the physicality, mm. and that's where you go seven one because you want that extra, extra guy, number. and that's what that that's what we probably missed with the seven one. And and the other argument is that they never take off the backs. 
They never sub the backs mm. anyway. So just put a specialist scrum off there. Damon can and cover 10, everybody can cover mm. something. But I think that was specifically, that's what it was tried at, at, at Twickenham. And it kind of worked. It worked. But it, it, it was really for that because they could move Scott better to six and, and not lose mm. any physicality. And that's why they went. So I'm not sure if they're going to go for the seven one again. In, in terms, I think we are more physical than Ireland. Mm. To be quite, not not to take them in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I, I don't think the seven one is probably going to. It might be used, but I don't think it's going to be uh, that that much of a thing. I think it's, they're going to use it. So? So? They're going to they, 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 <laughs> stick with something that works because you know we've debating this for for some weeks now, and you know I'm not a big fan of it, especially with the the backs. You know, so so yeah, so. Uh, we, we've, I don't want to say we've been lucky not getting like backs injuries and losing like two centers and two wings at, at, at one time. But 7 1 is, is part of South African rugby, I believe now. And um, without Kwaka there, it's, oh, then it, it, it's, it's like a catch 22. What loose forwards? Who are you going to put in there that's going to, you know, filter that spot? And um, so, so yeah, it's, I think Ireland is physical. Mm-hmm. Um, they're a physical team, and we, have, we base ourselves on physicality. Mm-hmm. And I think 7 1, 6 2 splits is something that, that we're going to move forward. And that's the way it's going to be? That's the way it's going to be. Okay. But then why did, why, why did you appoint Tony Brown if we're going to play the same way? So you, Just, need, to, you need to you have the 5 3 o- or the five three split open, because otherwise, why did we appoint Tony Brown? No, probably to get those loose, you know, those, no, those, the looses. No, to, to, to get those loose forwards and, and get them skilled up, you know, to, to fix that um, that that um, that spot that they actually want when it comes to Quaha, because Quaha, you, you can play. I know you can play center, wing, whatever, mm. and I know it's you can fold it in there, but you start him is a different story. But just to get that balance out, and you got him coming in, maybe just to. To, to give maybe a guy like Andre Pollard something different, like, like a man in the box and, and, and getting us around the park and moving the ball a little bit more than but, maybe co- uh, kicking cross kicks, yeah. But, 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 but we're saying that now. But have you ever seen Kwaha play wing? No. We haven't seen him yeah, play we wing. So we, we, we perceive this thing is working. We haven't seen him, someone gets injured, he's in he's the 20 yeah. minute chasing kicks, working back, making spot tackles mm. from, from the winger. We haven't seen that. Yeah. So we perceive that this thing is working. It might not even it might not even be a thing. Yeah. That's only when it's when the opportunity comes and it's five minutes to go, ten minutes to go, and he can Maybe step yes. into that role. Yes, for but sure. to start Quaha at center, I agree with you. Nee, to nee, start him on, on wing, work. it's a different story than to just put him there for five minutes, ten minutes just yep. to bail things out. Yeah. Sure. But yeah, it's gonna be an interesting and lekker lekker line. I'm excited. Huh? This man's man's roll over. Huh? As in Loftus. Loftus. Loftus or yeah, Loftus we, fold, we, yeah. we try to fold it up. We actually did fold I'm it up. I'm gonna be there again, Mama. It's a part Loftus. It's sold out again. You don't need you guys, Mama. <laughs> they don't need to <laughs> she was just okay in the last game as well we can't just fly over the the french fries and the, the english breakfast okay hey, hey. okay so that that last game is obviously also a cracker um and it's it was it came to the to the very end um I'm looking at looking at that game, Joe. Mm. Um, 33-31 for France. Okay, I don't know if you've watched it. It was 10 o'clock at night. Did you watch it? I watched it. I watched it. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keep <laughs> him sharp. <laughs> <and young. laughs> so um, that game, uh, the French is... Um, where, in what space is the French uh, situated, especially when it comes to missing the point, uh, moving Ramos to 10. They've got a new 15. Um, it looks like they find who the centers are, the wingers are, the loose forwards. And that... that back it's 960 kgs yeah, it's it's meat bully beef oh yes so i'm gonna do i'm gonna so that's a massive pack and mm-hmm. it's the pack that gets the the forwards get going um i mean we, we said to point is, is a massive loss nice. but lagarek has done the job for them yeah. uh the past couple of things what you feel around it the frenchies <sighs> someone made a comment about the frenchies that that quarter final really broke them and maybe emotionally and mentally it got to them but if you look at what galti is doing I looked at the packs now. I think Leo Barret, Louis Bail Barret. Mm. Louis Belleberry. We, we yeah. look at the center. Oui, oui. The, the mm. 12 center, Nicolas Deportere. Yes. What is the name? But look at the, the nine, uh, Lagaret, 21 yeah. years old. 10, um, Ramos, Ramos yeah. 27, 29 years old. Yes. 12, 21 years old. 13, Gael Fugo, 29 we'll years old. We said it last week, yeah. 14, 27 years old. 11, 22 years Two. old, 15, 21. Mm. So they're building a squad also because mm. no one remembers who won the, f- the, the Six Nations the, the yeah, year after, after the World yeah, Cup. Yeah, yeah. No one remembers mm. that. So they're actually in a good part. Yes, they struggled, yeah, maybe mentally. They're missing Dupont, they're missing Tamek. Those guys are going to come back. Gilbert Jube- uh, is not there. Mm. Jamane is not there. So there's a lot of players that still Masi. need to come back, but they're building a squad. Yeah. 
if they're going to make it to 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 to, to Australia, that's probably a different question. Are they going to keep this form? They got that young boy who's still playing on a twenty, the Tui Lagi. Oh yeah, 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 another yeah, one. The, yeah, mm. So they're really building a squad with Floki there. They got some good discipline. Mm. Um, what's his name? Uh, the the this is Sean Edwards. The, the defense, the he's going to have, an, he's gonna have yeah. another four years with them. So I think going forward, they're going to be a well balanced squad that they can pick probably, and maybe they also want that like the Springboks. If the Springboks got a bomb squad, maybe they want a second fifteen that they can also pick it any day. Mm. Just, yeah. For me, the, actually, the thing, I, I might be completely wrong, Rakus, is um, in the, the first three games, the, the French struggled and they dropped Dante, mm. the 12 yes. for La Rochelle. Yes. As soon as they dropped him, they, they looked like a different team. They moved the ball around a bit mm. better. Um, they had a bit more fluency in their oh, attack. Yeah. Mm. So obviously, Dante brings like physicality, we, physicality, physicality in his them, direct. Yeah. Um, mm. And they may actually made a smart, for me, a smart selection mm. change in dropping him, picking yeah. the young kid, and they had a lot more fluency and like mm. a Coming mm, in, who is exactly. for me an absolute superstar. Good. I yes. know everybody's in love with Dupont, mm. but the kid can play rugby. Yeah, he's the next big um, thing. He, he kicks for poles for, mm. uh, for for the Racing 92, and he's brilliant at that as well. So yeah. I think they found two nines at the moment. And they still Max Luca. Yeah. They still Max Luca. Yes. He kept out. Mm. And you still have Baptiste Serrand, who's playing but Toulon. for Toulon now. He's also the first come off. So there's, again, there's the future looks good. And, and, even those guys not, as well. and, and again, it's not like New Zealand, Australia, and there's the guys go and they leave to to overseas and yeah. we can't pick them again. They still Their there. Market is mm. overseas. They still they there. Around, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so those five scrum ups are gonna be there yeah. coming the next World mm. Cup. And quickly on the English boys, um uh, on the way up or what? Uh, are we looking? England. I thought they were on the way up and I uh, looked and I looked at their results and they've beaten everybody, they've beaten Italy, they just beaten Italy, they lost against France. They just, just beat beaten Wales. Wales with the other team. Scotland, they lost against mm. Scotland. And I really thought they won the up. And I thought, yeah, man. But then I also th thought that Alec or Felix Jones, I always say Alex, Felix Jones was part of the Springbok okay. setup who was thinking in their minds they're gonna, they might get Ireland in the final, who was prepping for Ireland. That's why they were ready for Ireland. Mm. They, they, the defense, they were up for Ireland because his analysis was done in the World Cup already on mm. Ireland. They haven't changed a lot. Mm. So that was the one game where they really played well. The other games they were, yes, they might they might be on the up. You say the defense, they say the defense takes 14 matches too. Yeah, to get going, to, to yeah. Get going, and yeah. It's, for me, it looks like they're improving. I must say, looking at the defensively. last- Defensively. Defensively and yeah. on the attack as well, because they scored actually f four tries against three this, this past weekend. Mm. The attack is looking good. And like Oli Lawrence is playing fantastic rugby. Furbank at the back is also surprising mm. me a little bit. Um, you know, as, as Stewart is only one dimensional coming from the back. But um, for me, the, the last two games is actually mm. England has showed me a little bit of, oh, okay. They, but they shouldn't, like, they shouldn't have beaten Ireland. The guy was out, did you see? He stepped on the line. I'm also not- There, there wasn't a win. But okay. Mm. I, it's England, it's England it's isn't, I, I'm still up and down with England. It was the same in the World Cup. Yeah. They, what they do really well is they find a way to win. But mm. do they convince me and do, do I think that they do not um, certain stuff really well? No, yeah. at the moment. So um, yes, they're competitive. They should be. Yes. They, mm. they, they, uh, a rugby they play powerhouse. Index, yeah. So um, I was still have question marks about that. I would partner. like to see this, this last two, yeah. from the last two games, I would like to see them kicking on from here. Okay. Um, moving on to there to a uh, couple of games um, coming up. Yes. But uh, for me, sometimes we always be like, oh, okay, England, okay, it's your time to, to shine now. It's your time to get better. And then they kind of disappoint you. And um, I just feel like hopefully whatever they have now at the moment, just grow on it. Okay. Because it's, sure. it's, a, it's a three year, 2027 is like a couple of years away. Pick your 23, stick with them, back them a little bit. You can make a couple of changes. I would say you need more striking wingers a, a little bit. I don't think there's, the wingers are more like, you know, got that Colby yeah. type of iron. So fin they need finishers. Finishers, okay? Like back in the old days, you know, Johnny May could finish um, those type of wingers. Um, but yeah, I must say there's, 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 there's lots of positives they can move forward with, they're negatives. Okay. Mm. And, then, and then again, if you, if you look at, Felix now. Felix has been with the spring box. Took all that IP and took it to Ireland. I would expect that whoever's that guy keeps that IP in South Africa. And that's what bringing, uh, to go back to the point of bringing foreign coaches, coaches in. They take that IP away. Yes, I don't, again, I don't know what the plan is. That might be a brilliant plan like, like the last one. But again, that IP f is gone now. It's, it's, going, it's going to go to England. And to be honest, England playing now, do you think they can beat the All Blacks? Maybe Australia, Peter, South Africa. So I don't know. Yeah. Is Furbanks the you, option? Yeah, you never know like, what's coming. 
with, with, with them. They, they and, might and be they, brilliant they, or they might be like, ah, so you, they need that Ireland has got a chance. You can even say Italy's got a chance because there's consistency. Mm. Yeah. But with England, like, so it's, it's up and down. Up and down, <laughs> up and down, yeah. But yeah, that's exciting. I, I must say it was incredible Six Nations, say, partner. Oh. Um, uh, there were some, some cracking games. I mean, around f- uh, last week's round has actually gave us opportunity to make it tight because otherwise Ireland would have just ran away with it, um, having the Grand Slam. But it was in, in, in fantastic Fantastic, fantastic season. So I'm looking forward to the next international games. It's got to be time. No, that was mm-hmm. brilliant, brilliant. And obviously, 4022 was also something that stood out for me in, in this um, Six Nations campaign. Yeah. You remember that scoreline? Yeah, 4022. Okay. Just okay, we're not, we're not going to go there. Okay, leave <laughs> okay. it off this. We'll be waiting for 6th of July, okay? <laughs> Sorry, so, right. yeah, I will have your seven up here. But anyway, <laughs> up is uh, Gio Aplon. Uh, thank you very much for making mm-hmm. the time. It's always incredible yeah. to have you on the show. You're a friend of the show now. I mean, we always get you on the show because we know you ex- the stuff you've picked up throughout your career, you know, in Japan, in France, with, the, with Stormers and the spring box and just to share the knowledge uh, with our ruckus and not even the ruckus but just to share your knowledge and 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 I know you're behind the laptop now you know working <laughs> with numbers but you know just to give back and just to share and and, and have still have that love for the game now it keeps me on my toes I, I, mm. I don't watch rugby that often but it keeps me on my toes if you guys call and invite me to, to watch a bit of rugby and yeah it's always good to be it's always I like the program it's always uh, informative you learn what's the other the other day you learn more about other players. Sometimes mm. you think you you know yeah, a lot and you I don't know what players well, yeah. go through. Mm. You don't know how someone stood up or where they come from. And it's always awesome to 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 to, to get a view of other other people's stories. Yeah. And also to see the two mad guys going <laughs> behind the <laughs> scenes and going around. It's almost cool. Yeah. Yeah. So guys, that's your Aplon. We'll see him in a couple of episodes. Ooh, hey. Partner, um, uh, the OG I, Power Ranger, the Opa. The yes, Opa, and Opa. I wish we've got more time for him always mm. when he's here. Yeah. His rugby intelligence is honestly next level. Incredible, yeah. It's just to see how he thinks about the game. He thinks a little bit different to 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 the normal, uh, you know, out there. And even uh. the two of us as well. So we had a lack of debate, we had a lack of discussion love it. about, yeah. Love, about love, time. love it, Ruckus. Yeah. To get a different opinion uh, um, and, and it's, just, it's just good to see. It's good to have him back. And it's always good net, to have someone else's perspective on the rugby. Mm. You understand? A different view, a different opinion, eating at different angles to this thing. Oh, ah. no, so, <laughs> it's it's crucial, yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, so when he doesn't even hit behind the laptop, uh, uh. coaching, he can maybe. I also think so. Yeah, there's something there. Definitely. But he must do his box mat. Joe, uh, Joe, do uh. box, box mat first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, incredible to, to have a catch up with him. So obviously Six Nations are done. We're moving into the Crescida, the URC. We'll cover that in the URC predictions later on. But yeah, but before we get there, we get the... A lekker kids up. Huh? With the Masala strand spice. Uh, uh, just a quick catch up, just to see how's things. Uh, how's he adjusting? How's he been fitting in? You know, we, we always know he's got this. He's yeah, got this the legs are the strand. They born with this. They, they, yeah, razzle. You razzle dazzle. Yeah. Mm. So um, let's get up with him and to see how's he fitting in. How's the sevens uh, um, uh, squad going and, and and what is the targets going forward? Let's yeah. go, boy. Yeah. Up next, there's ten lights. Let's go. Ooh, and a clean buta. Lights. Yes. Strand on any ice. I see. Huh? Rack is also delight. <laughs> so okay. Like Trust the lights. Welcome to Behind the Rack, man. Fantastic to see you. How are you? Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. I'm doing good. Doing good. Uh, got some good rest in after the past tournament. Ready to rock and roll again. Yeah, he's just... Like, I can see the smile on his face. He's yes, happy. He's enjoying it. He's mm? loving his time at, in the sevens. What a change that is. Say, from 15 to sevens, uh, after I did you try it? Um, no, Rakas, no. Okay. Why, why are you on my case, boy? Just checking, just checking, yes. just checking, just checking. What a transition that was. Um, how are you finding it? How's the training been, especially those those long defensive days? Yeah, definitely. The first couple of months was really tough. Uh, guys picking on you, you know, they, you know, you're the new guy in the team, new defender, so they're picking on you, trying to step you and all that. But um, got used to it, say four months into it. I'm going to start on a qualifiers team. Um, I started on Dubai and Cape Town and eventually got my shot in the beginning of the year in uh, Perth. Yeah. Um, partner actually shared with me a story a few weeks ago when I visited here by the sus about his uh-huh. first try that he scored. Oh, yeah. And I would love him to share that story yeah. with the ruckus, with his quick tip. He, he was Tristan, you mind? He was squatting because all the boys were jumping on him. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you jump just pays off, it. jump pays off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, obviously coming in on the, on the game, uh, dying minutes, uh, we're up in the lead against Canada. Uh, we get a penalty, balls in front of my legs. Mm. Uh, one of the guys still having a chat with a ref and I 
take a quick tap while Sella shouting, yeah. no, no, no. I think he was trying to slow the game down because they were quite tired. So the gap opening up and under the poles, I was trying to steal some time. But as I got the ball down, the Jets are running at me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was the Kippy who was shouting, no, no, no. Was he shouting then? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was actually the first one there to celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> and that's uh, that's awesome, especially when it comes to 15s. You've played 15s now with, you know, the mm. Curry Cup and the Stormers and the boys. How's that adjustment been? Oh, yeah. Obviously, I've known the adjustment to going to sevens, the things you need to learn, because obviously you can't square up that much. It's following your pass, yeah. uh, getting there, working in threes. How's the adjustment been um, on playing on the field and also a little bit off the field analyzing? Yeah, off the field is, is, is quite different to 15s. Uh, you get to analyzing your position where things are going wrong but in sevens it's uh, all over the park because you find yourself sometimes on the wing sometimes in mm. the middle of the field where it gets heated and uh just to to bring on energy when you come off the bench yeah. uh some of the guys are play probably like 10 minutes a game so, mm. so so they're tired and you just bring that energy whether it's two minutes one minute or even 30 seconds we mm. still got a lot of games got overtime nowadays yeah Tristan, quick question. This is going to be not with sevens. I'm going to ask him hey, a random question. Because right? like it just <laughs> popped up into my head and I might forget it. Okay. okay. If the Stormers are playing La Rochelle, who are we supporting there? Ah, come last, on. Last time, last time supported the Stormers, but this, this time, time around, got to get Buta. Okay. Huh? Go with Buta. Supporting Buta. Ik moet. Yeah. Ik moet. You remember you know, what? Never weer, you know. Huh? Okay. Ik moet. <laughs> 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 Listen, going back to the sevens um, just quickly, um, the season for you guys obviously the next tournament coming up in a couple of, couple more weeks um, you got a couple before you get to Madrid and before you get to an important thing of qualifying for, this, uh, for the Olympics yeah uh, definitely where things haven't been going for us uh, as well as we wanted the way we started um, just need to pick it up now we got three tournaments left uh, mm. to get the ball rolling again so that we're peaking at the time of qualif um qualifiers and uh, Olympics. Yeah. But obviously, uh, Ruckus, um, I haven't played the sevens, but everybody talks about the Hong Kong sevens. Mm. Um, firstly, to you, the question, what is it like? And secondly, to Mr. Lates over there, are you excited playing in Hong Kong? My answer is quick. I haven't played in Hong Kong, but yeah. Over to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've heard some stories about, about Hong Kong. The, the guys are saying it's a, it's a really good one. Um, it used to be, I know there used to be money uh, involved mm. there in that, okay. in that event. Um, but the Fijians are the favorites. Yeah, that's kind of their home turf. Yeah. And then lo looking at the season, so obviously the last, it's eight tournaments. The last one is Madrid, is it? Yeah. So whoever wins Madrid wins the, wins the series. Yeah. So wait, actually, wow. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Oh. Wait, wait, so, huh? wait, so if you win in Madrid, you win the, the, the whole Yes, yeah. you win but the only, whole series. Only top eight players in Madrid. Only top eight. Only top oh, eight. Okay, cool. Oh, and, okay. And okay, so it's important for us to get to top eight. Yeah. Um, and once we get to top eight, we qualify for the tournament yeah. and qualify to win the series. Yes. Yo, okay. So <laughs> how many? So two more tournaments left? Two more tournaments then. And then Madrid. Yeah. Yeah. There's a chance. So you're telling me it's a chance. Hmm? After Jim Kerry, you're telling me it's a chance. Oh, we're <laughs> showing over to the fat lady. Yes, yes, you love it, man. I ach ball, you have it. Oh, no. Okay. Stop. <laughs> seat belt. <laughs> Sit down your seat belt, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Tristan, that's fantastic. Uh, um, after the season, obviously the future for you. Um, are you keen to go back to 15? So are you happy to stay a couple more years? Uh, for now, I'm focused here on the job at hand. Um, would love to remain at the sevens, get a, more than a couple of tournaments, get some good experience, and hopefully leave the jersey in a better place if I end up leaving. Yeah. And, and the best part so far for you, Moving from 15 to 7, what has it been? Has it been the airplane, big lounge, or has it just been a new fresh breath of life on your rugby and space and you got time with ball in hand? Yeah, um, like I said, new 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 energy coming into my into my game, learning a lot about myself, um, growing as a player day mm. by day. Um, in 15s, there's, there's not much room for growth. There's a lot of guys around you and yeah, every day, it's just growing day by day, bit by bit, just so you can get better. Mm. And you coming from, is it Strand or Strand? What, what's it now these days? Uh, huh? Strand. Is strand, it Strand? Huh? Is so strand. even if it's English Afrikaans. Uh, and the talent is a lot of talent. Uh, it's Willi, it's Kitsi, it's the Leitsies, uh, it's Gazi. There's two places guys in the West Cup. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Wellington? Is strand? In, in Wellington. See it well. See it well. Here you are, see? Okay. A Strand guys in, in the Peril, the Peppies. Peppies yeah. I don't know what Peppies, yeah. is in the water in Strand and in Peppies, but the Peppies is like... What are the world, eh? yeah. Mm. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There's background yeah. players for days. Mm. What's, your, what's your journey coming through? Uh, what schools were you? 
Uh, started off primary school in the club in the strand. Um, strand. Mm. Strand. Yeah. Mm. Strand. Strand. <laughs> strand. Strand. Um, was fortunate enough to go to Bishops, um, get a good schooling oh, there, yeah. and uh, mm-hmm. some some yeah. good running rugby. I think that groomed me into the player that I am today, and just adding over the years after school, just adding bit by bit. To yeah. The, uh, running so rugby. you that YouTube kid. It was first Matt Turner, it was Nick Costa, then uh, was no, it was no, no, 1 no, million no, no. views. Huh? What? <laughs> yeah, yeah, this guy, yeah? I'm I say, Baruch, 1 million views in the past. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tracy, thank you very much for making yeah, the time. Yes. Uh, yes, I know you, you've you got a busy schedule, especially leading up to Madrid, which is the important one in a, in a couple couple of weeks or couple of months. Um, all the best, man. Um, it's exciting to see you playing sevens. You know, it's a game that you need... S- it's, it's lacquer, man. It's, you get more time on the ball. You got space, and that's what you kind of want. Yeah. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you go. Um, you still got experience. You got a lacquer squad now. Things are moving up for you guys. Um, you see, uh, experienced players like Speckers and the boys. Um, so it's important for you. Yeah, keep learning and, and enjoy it. And, thank you and very much, my side, thank you much for making the time. And we're going to see them in yes. Madrid. And congratulations to the Lates family. Yes. He's an uncle. He's an uncle. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. the uncle's yeah. duties yes. will kick in yes. soon. Yes. That yes. you can yes. do your part. Yes. As a family member. Yes. Dylan, ek praat me nie oor. Wee het hy om skoon te maak. Ek denk jy so nie. Kijk my videos op YouTube. Okay. I never seen you. Thanks, hey. Guys, that is Tristan Lates. Ooh, Ooh Tristan Lights. Na 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 na. Hey, Tristan Lights. Na 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 na. Hey, fantastic. Hey, partner. Hey. Good to catch up with him. Lovely. Huh? Huh? Is Lovely it, to see. It. Smile on his face. Yes, and he's settled in. Mm. He, yeah, he's got his seatbelt on. He's Aye. settled in. Um, rackers, strand rackers. Mm. <laughs> sort your light. <laughs> yeah, um, awesome to see. Um, obviously, their season is up and running as well. They're slowly moving and targeting, obviously, Madrid, um, trying to get there, trying to qualify for Olympics. But to catch up with him, just to see how he f- you know, fits in into the seventh circuit is not always easy. You can ask a lot of rugby players to go from 15 to seventh. It's tough. I can only imagine. Yeah, and he's, he's been adjusting well. He's been he's been striking hard. And he's an absolute talent. So mm. it's, a, it's it's for us, it's awesome to see him on the seventh circuit. Um, he'll only get better yeah, the longer yeah, yeah, he plays yeah, the yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Um, yeah. just happy to see him with a, such a big smile. 100%. Yeah. So Tristan, all the best. Hey. Thanks for making time for us. We really appreciate it. And yeah, as on the strand is, I'll come as you too. Hey. <laughs> uh, partner, let's go to Cressida. It's your seat time. Okay. Okay, we got to cover a couple of things. We have to make sure that um, there's four games coming up. Um, the South African teams. South African teams. Yes. We got to focus on the South African teams. Obviously, two, two teams that's playing at home. Yes. And let's start with the teams that's uh, playing at home. So it's Sharks versus Ulster on Saturday, 3 o'clock. And then Stormers versus Edinburgh at 5 past 5. Okay. Crack of, of, of games coming up. And then the two boys going away, it's Lions and the Bulls. So Connacht versus Lions at quarter past 7. And uh, Dragons versus Bulls also on Saturday, um, 9.35. <laughs> they slap. Hey. <laughs> yeah, you slap. Yeah, came for you, you slap. It's a late game. But, but yeah, uh, covering the first two games, uh, incre- oh, important for the Sharks to get going. I mean, Alster's a good team. I mean, Stephen Kutz and the boys. <laughs> Alster's like, a really good a team. A really partner. good team, yeah. They're sitting pretty on the lock at the moment. Um, uh, and they don't have a lot of Irish players, mm. so they would be well rested. I would imagine that they will come with a full strength side to the Sharks, to Durban, yeah. to get to make sure that they end up closer to the top two of mm. the URC. It's the crunch time. People are not resting anymore. Yeah. So, um, it's crunch time, yeah. Mm. Yeah, interesting game. Interesting my heart game, still yeah. goes with the Sharks. Eh? Oh, we I don't know why. In. Partner, my heart, I still... If you're going to ask me, I am still want to back the Sharks. Yeah. I still want them to play well and I still mm. want them to... to get to top eight. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, we'll have to see what's going to happen on 3 o'clock. It's going to be an interesting weekend, especially for the Shark boys. Hopefully they can just, let's say, shock the world. Yeah, like a time off, um, come well back rested. stronger, mm. um, well rested, um, throw the shackles away, yes. like we said the last time, play a biggie, spill a biggie ball. Yes, make it harder los. Quick tapping thing, wait for now, and so go quickies. But as a team. As a, okay, 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 okay sorry for that. Yeah. And then the Stormers in Edinburgh is obviously the DHL st- um, Stadium. Welcome back, the boys are back. It's been a, been a long time couple of weeks. Um, partner, obviously, uh, yeah. after the, um, Ruckus after the last result, it's the 40 mm. at Loftus Fairs Field. Mm. Um, you like that, eh? Let's, mm. the, let's summer it for a little bit. Um, okay. But in all honesty, um, partner, truly believe the Stormers are going to bounce back mm. in uh, dramatic fashion. I think yeah. they'll be up for it. I think the Stormers will play really good rugby. Mm. They'll be well rested. I know they had the warm-up game 
uh, at Northampton yes, yes, uh, yes. A, a few weeks ago, two weeks ago. Mm, and the guys are finding them strips. Obviously, we didn't get the result. Obviously, Loftus. But I mean, like, guys, like, what I've learned is, is carving it up now, slowly but surely. Um, Manny Lebok is finding no, them strips. It, um, but no, you, guys, you guys had one, I wouldn't say a oopsie. bad game. Blipsy. Uh, oopsie, a blipsie. Mm. I've got no doubt the Storms are yeah, going to win yeah, Edinburgh, yeah, though. Yeah. You understand? And it's interesting to see what Edinburgh, Edinburgh is going to bring over because obviously they guys uh, play the, the big game against Ireland. Uh, will they be ready to play Duan van der Merwe, um, you know, Schumann, all these boys. But uh, still, even if they had the Scottish starters in the mm. team and coming over to, to, to the HL Stadium, uh, I would still back the Stormers. Yeah. With Dion Fury, with Damien Willems, with Mani Lebok, with Paul mm. De Wit, with Hersel Yankees, with Ivan Roos. Mm. That is quality rugby players that the Stormers possess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... Um, they will be fired up. Mm. They know uh, every game now going to the end of the season yeah. will have consequences. Ooh, top so eight, um, top, top eight, eight and top and four and top and two and, 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 and top, having top, home top, playoffs. Mm. Everything has got consequences. Yeah. So um, they'll be ready. The yeah. Stormers will be firing and yeah. they'll be good huh? to go. It's time to make Cape Town smile again. Hey. Hey. And, uh, and then obviously we're working on to that Lions away against Connacht. Um, Konak Kanaki, yeah. yeah Konak so, <laughs> <laughs> so Lions, uh, ooh, interesting. So uh, like Sanele said the last time, that's four away games. So it's a tough run they're getting themselves into. They're sitting 11th on the log, then they want to get top eight. So this is a big opportunity f for them. Konak is a good team. It's a very good very team, good partner. Team, especially At in the home, backyard. So With uh, that rainy conditions and the cold weather yeah. and late night games at Konak and the wind blows from the one side to the other side it. of the mm. field. Um, and they swirl into that, yeah. Hopefully <sighs> they can, it, it's important for them, the first 20 minutes, blast them off the park. 14 0, get there as soon as possible. Uh, team, put your marker down. Team selection will be interesting for me, actually, mm -hmm. seeing if they're going to go with Sanele at 9 and Jordan at 10, or they're going to go Crappy with the tried and, and tested mm -hmm. Crappy at 9 and Sanele at 10, with that weather conditions and seeing what yeah. the Lions play like in that sort of the. And it's windy over there, it yes. can be wet and greasy, it can be, uh, you know, the. It's going to be extremely tough for me to make a call on it because Connacht is such a good side at home. Yeah. Away from home, I would have gone Lions easily. Mm. But Connacht at home, mm. alles moeilijk. In between. That's not the best. Alles moeilijk. <laughs> alles <laughs> moeilijk. Alles <laughs> moeilijk. <laughs> yeah, and then the last one, your boys. Mm? Bulls. Dragons against the Bulls. This is one you, sh you should target. <laughs> yeah, this is one you should target. I with love everything how you, you do. just chuck that uh, yeah, little ball. Just for me, because the next game is obviously against Leinster. Uh, you guys get Leinster the week after, and uh, two weeks away from home, it's always tough. But the Dragons is not looking that good. Um, they're at the bottom of the lock, so it's a game you should target and get five points, just to make sure you get away from the guys chasing you. Yes, mm. I agree 100% with mm. you, um, my partner. Um, it's a must win for the, yeah. for the Bulls. It's an important important win yeah. for the Bulls. I know it's not one of the strongest sides mm. in the URC, but a very important um, game this for the Bulls. Yeah. That it will have lack of breathing space for us. It will give us breathing space. Yeah, and just yeah, allow yeah. to say, <sighs> still okay, must lions lekker. chase, chase, chase. Yes. Yeah, that's what you want one day. Mm. Uh, let's get to our Lula bit predicts. Hey, 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 you start first. I want you, uh, giving you honors to you, Sharks, Sharks versus Ulster. Sharks, Ulster, okay. This is going to be, yeah, this is quick my fire. Let's go quick fire with Rackers, this. this is my heart speaking. I'm going to go Sharks by 10 at home against Ulster. Sharks by 10. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to follow my head. Gamble okay. with your head, they say. Not um, your so, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go, um, I'll, I'll back Alistair to win this one. Um, okay. You know, they, they're a solid team. They, they're top of the lock for, re, of top part close, of the Close off. game or, or big? No, I say plus five. It's going to be a tough game, but uh, Alistair will just have the edge, you know, with um, Kutsi and the senior players coming okay. down. Okay. Um, yeah, in the next game, Stormers, Edinburgh. Mm. Hey, I'm going to go Stormers. Yep. Um, I'm actually going to beg the Stormers, really. Yeah. I'm going to go by 14. Yeah. Stormers around by 14. Um, that's my pick this mm. week, guys. Yeah, that's, that's I like that confidence. Hey? Yeah. It's been a while since you backed the Stormers like okay. that. Yeah. So I'm going to go Stormers with 10. Nice. Yeah, 10 points, still confidence. Uh, I know you give confidence. Your boards, like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the, the last two, uh, Connacht versus Lions. Um, sorry, Sanele, Lions guy. I'm going to go with Connacht for this one. I'm going to go Connacht by eight points at home. Um, I just think Connacht is a really yeah. good team at home. Yeah. So Connacht by eight for me, partner. Mm. So we're in the same boat. I'm also going to go Connacht with um, 10. 10 points. Yeah, 10 points. They're it's going to be team a, at home, man. a good team at home. Dragons, Bulls, talk to um, me. Bulls, but I don't think it's going to be as convincing as I would want to believe. I think the, the last game we had against the Stormers, I don't mm. know if the boys has gotten over that emotional high. Mm. We will still win the game, but I yeah. think it will be tougher than what we will expect. Yeah. So I'll go Bulls by five. Yeah. 
And I back you boys, actually. What is it? You back the Stormers hard and I back the Bulls hard. Okay. So I'll go Bulls with 15. Okay, Bulls Can you believe it? Nice. Can you believe it? Love it. Yeah, I just think like the, um, the, the Bulls are, the confidence is flying high. Yes. They know all the South African teams are chasing them. And they the know the shield. importance of this the game. The importance of this game because next weekend is Le- uh, Leinster away. It's going to be a tough ask actually. So this is the game to target. So they're going to go fighting with this game, putting all their eggs in this basket. And hopefully they can get it plus. So, Rakers, that is our Lula Bet predictions. predictions okay, yeah. that's our picks. Make sure that you guys go do your picks mm. on the Lula Bet app. Yes. And yes, website. Yes. Uh. And do the thing. Do your thing. Do the thing, yeah. But another wow. fantastic episode. It's a, it's a month four. By a rugby. Hmm? By a rugby. We had a lot <laughs> to speak about. But yes. it was for me, for us, it was important, Rakers, that we... We brought in Gio. Yeah. We got his perspective on, mm. on, on, on the Six Nations. We closed that book now. Yes. Huh? Mm. Yeah, we closed that book. We're moving on. Mm. Enough on We're Ireland and England and enough. Yes. As number one, South two F- team, actually. But number one. number one. number one. Yes, it's uh, one number one. Only one number one. one. Yes. Hey, I'm Champion. a boca. But yeah, um, awesome. So, fantastic episode. Um, yeah. And credit must go to our, 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 you know, our people in our corner. It's, yes. It's, it's important. Mm. Obviously, um, Ruckers, you guys know, Behind the Ruck now is powered by Kruger International, yeah. Asset and Wealth Management, and our exclusive betting partner, Lula Bet. And for anyone out there that would love to get on board and back us, do feel mm. free to make contact with us via our website. All our details are on our website. And please get behind us and back this amazing show for two guys in a mic that <laughs> love what they do. Okay, Rakas? <laughs> yeah, fantastic episode, eh? Um, and yeah, to have good people in our corner, have a fantastic episode like this. And I'm bringing you to a... Hey, Mm? Yeah, my it's, it is bit, fantastic yeah. facilities here at the yes, SAS. Yes. Um, you, you, and you look smart. Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, yes, you yes, look yes, like yes, a million yes, dollars. Yes, yes, well done, Wiki. I'm going to my chest now. Uh, yeah. I talk. Uh, uh, Guys, I'm, uh, yes. I'm wearing my first year student clothing. Yeah, yeah, there uh, we go. Eh? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, fantastic episode. Um, it's important for Arrakis. Hey, guys. Is it, uh, must you say it every time. Is it time one, to like, share, and subscribe? One, one, one last one. Uh, uh, again? Yeah, one last one. They got it by now. Okay. It's time to like, Share and, and subscribe. subscribe. Please, I repeat, Rakes. I repeat, like, like share, share and subscribe. subscribe. And thank you for your ongoing support. Yes. We really appreciate it. Keep liking, keep sharing, keep commenting. Let us know what's going on. And yeah, check our social media pages. And, uh, for all involved. competitions and everything. Yes, competition yes. Uh, is uh, win. Win, yeah? Please, guys. It's like a good one. It's like a good one. Yes. Yes, yes. It's important. And yeah. that's it? That's it, yeah. That's it, chicken wrap. Oh, and we wrap these things up, right? Hey. Guys, I'm Rudy Pates. I'm Joanne de Jong. And the rock is clear. clear.